Welcome to a go. This is part two of our two part series where I show my collection of Italian art glass. In this installment, I'll be showing you all my signed Murano pieces, my Empoli, as well as those pieces that may or may not be Empoli or Murano. If anyone has corrections to make or would like to share additional information, please leave verifiable proof below in the comments section. Before we get started, I'm gonna show you a few pieces that are definitely not Murano. First off are these two perfume bottles. They're polished on the bottom, just as Murano is polished. When I picked these up, I thought they were Murano. I was super excited. You got them at a great price, so it's fine with me. But they're still pretty cool Somerso pieces. But when I did a little bit of research, I found out that they're made in China. I found quite a few examples online that has a sticker that says Fifth Avenue. A big clue of these pieces not being real Murano is that you see them all over the place. And whenever you see something all over the place, you have to think to yourself if it's real or not. Because usually authentic pieces are harder to find and copies are plentiful. This is another piece made in China. And this is another one you see all the time. Tipping you off that it's not real. It's not actual Murano. It's made in China. Since the last video, I did find a couple more pieces of Murano. Found this one. Similar to the other ones I had. Different design, but same colors. And the other piece does have a sticker on it, and I'll be showing you that a little later. So let's dive right in. With Italian glass, it comes down to two major places where it's produced, the island of Murano and the town of Empoli and the surrounding area. Glass making in Empoli first started for utilitarian reasons, and that was to contain potable liquids such as wine, and were green due to the sand that was being used to produce glass. And they gave the name of the color glass Empoli Verde. Here's the first example of Empoli glass. It appears that most of the glass in Empoli were not actually hand blown, but were created by using a mold. There's no polished pontil mark, but you can maybe see a faint line of the mold. This would be a good example of that Empoli Verde that Empoli is known for. It is missing the stopper. This is a pretty utilitarian piece, and all the pieces of Empoli glass that I own were all used to contain wine. Another example of Empoli is this piece right here, and this is actually hand blown. You can see the pontil mark there, and it's unpolished. You can tell that it's Italian made because the hobnail, it protrudes more and is more pointy than you see in the American glass. I have two really nice examples of Empoli decanters. First off is this huge piece. It's an amethyst color, no pontil mark. There's actually no mold marks on this one, so I'm not quite sure how this one was made. The stoppers on these decanters do appear to be hand blown. I also have this aqua blue example. The same form and all. But you can see the difference in the two stoppers. One's a lot larger than the other. It's more, this one's more bulbous. So each one has their own character. I also have this piece that's very similar to the brandy snifters you'll find. But this one does not have a stem base on it. It has a different shape to it. But it still has that beautiful optic effect. You can also see the mold line on it. I have two more examples, and these may or may not be in poly. I'm not quite sure. I had this really gorgeous piece, and the stopper does appear to be handmade. This is a very delicate glass. The thing that makes me think that it's not in poly is because of the texture on the bottom. I have not seen this texture on other pieces. But it's gorgeous nonetheless, whether it's in Poli or not. If anyone has any additional information on this piece, please let me know in the comment section below. I also have this very large decanter. Being that it's hand blown, I'm not sure if it is in Poli or not. I really think it is, but I was doubting myself. I posted this up on the Blanco Glass Facebook group. Because it had the pontil mark, it seems that they hammered into your head that Blanco will have a pontil mark. That's why I put it in that group to find out. And they said it's definitely not Blanco. So again, I'm thinking that it's in Poli. Well, we're coming down to the end of this video. All we have left to show are those signed pieces of Murano as well as those that may or may not be Murano. Four of these pieces I purchased at an estate. One is marked with a foil Murano sticker and the other three are unmarked. So let's get to showing you the rest of these. Before I get to those four pieces, this is one of the most recent acquisitions of Murano glass. It's a very simple piece, but just the fact that it has the Murano foil sticker creates enough interest for me to have it in my collection. 
Now to show you those four pieces that I spoke to you about prior. First, show you the pieces that may not be Murano. They sure saw it end up being Murano. But as you can see on the bottom, it's not polished flat, but it has a recessed polished part. So I'm not sure if this is Murano or not. To me, the curve looks a little odd. But it's still a worthy piece to have in my art glass collection. I also have this Mina Fiore piece. I don't think this is Murano. It's also polished, but it has a dimple in the bottom. I've seen this listed on an online auction site that sold for $145 plus shipping. And last but not least from that collection is this one. I love the free-flowing ribs on it. And it has some very nice curves to it, as you can see. This one is marked with the foil sticker. This is from a company called Kramer Glass out of New York, but it does have Made in Italy on the foil sticker. This one's definitely a keeper. All right, there's two more pieces that may or may not be Murano. First one's this bowl. It's like a geode bowl, a little bit more free form. It doesn't have a polished edge on it. It's a super cool piece though, I love it. As you can see, it's polished on the bottom, but it has a dimple as well. If anyone knows if that's a sign of it being made in another country, and which country it might be, if it's Poland or whatnot, please let me know in the comments below. It's a very well-made piece. It doesn't really look like those pieces made in China. So it may be a European country, or maybe Murano. I also have this stunning ball. This one, I'm pretty sure it is Murano. It's polished on the bottom, but it has that translucent purple, blue, clear, so it's Somerso. Just a beautiful piece. And now onto some more fine pieces. I actually have two sets of these and I cannot find my other set. I sure would have hated to lose them, but it's this apple and pear pair of bookends by Alfredo Barbini. And these are a classic example of Somerso because you have the different colors of glass totally encased within another colored glass. So one time I'd use the term phenomenal to describe these. This pair is the one that has a foil sticker on it with the name of Alfredo Barbini. And look what I just found. I was just doing some organizing in the back of our gallery and found these at the bottom of a box. I wasn't expecting to find these so quickly. But here they are, the other pair of Alfredo Albini bookends. Last but not least is the only piece of Murano art glass that I have, which has an engraved signature. And the design of this piece is called a love knot. I just love the gorgeous color in it. I love the iridescent effect that the Foglia de Oro creates with that other blue color, purple. It has green in it as well. It just looks like snake skin. It's such a cool piece. This is a piece I paid the most for at auction. Pretty much all my collection I have is found at garage sales, thrift stores, some estate sales, and this one piece being from an online auction. Like I said, it has a signature on the bottom. You can see the foil stamp that says Made in Italy, Venezia. It also has engraved signature. I've researched it and I can't find out what it is. Let's see here, see if I can try to make it out. It says R period. The next word starts with a G. and looks like V-R-O-I or V-O-I. I'm not quite sure. If anyone knows what that signature might be, please leave a comment down below in the comment section. We'd greatly appreciate it. I just realized I skipped a piece of glass. This one, I'm pretty sure it's Murano. Not 100% sure. It has the polished bottom. And this is a huge piece. This is the largest piece I have. So I love the beautiful curves that it created. It almost looks like an abstract heart. And it has a beautiful foglia de oro with that orange color. And then it has the encased glass because it has the white on the inside. If there's any piece of glass that's a statement piece, that's this one. This is the fourth one I found at that one estate. So it appears that they had a mixture of real Murano as well as some copies. Well, that's the end of this video. It's been a lot of fun making it. I did a little bit of research and I learned some things along the way. I hope you learned something here as well and found this content interesting. If you like this kind of content, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and invite your friends and family to do the same. We'd greatly appreciate it. So until next time, thanks for stopping by, and we'll catch you next time.